Hey guys, it's Tuesday Guy Cool. And this week's topic, we're talking to you about tips um, on battling dysphoria. I'm sorry, my hair just kind of like, mm. Anyway, you like that? Okay, so we're giving you tips on battling dysphoria. And my first tip for y'all, don't let people create your narrative for you. And what I mean by that is, I feel like I've talked about this before, but when I first realized that I was going to go this route with my life, I was obviously, you know, doing my research on YouTube. I, I mean, I, I'm like, where else are you gonna do it, right? But anyway, so I was looking at all these trans guys on YouTube and it seemed like, you know, majority of, majority of them had like dysphoria, like, of, of? They had a problem with their entire body, it seemed. And so seeing that made me think like, okay, so they're binding, so I need to bind. That's how I become passable. And they're packing because, you know, whatever. So I need to pack. But like, I, <laughs> honestly, I used to pack every day. And I, I, don't know, I don't know how I got to this point, but it's so uncomfortable not having something in my pants, but it's like, you know how it like shifts sometimes and it's like, damn, I look like I have a fucking boner and I don't want to look like that. I don't want to draw any attention to that area because it's like, you know, I don't want to draw any attention to myself, period, honestly. So I just stopped packing and I realized that I don't even have bottom dysphoria. Like I said, I let people, you know, paint this narrative for me and you know i just kind of got lost in that about like a year into my transition my medical transition i realized that i don't even i don't even have a problem with it like i said like this is cool i don't need to pack i'm not even gonna change it like ever that's how i'm feeling so far right i've been feeling like this for a minute so you know yeah so yeah number one don't let anybody tell you that you need dysphoria to be trans that's bullshit but the one thing that I do have dysphoria about now, and honestly, it's minimized uh, over the past, what, what year is it? Past five years. Uh, because I started binding in 2013, in the summer of 2013. That was a hot summer in Colleen, Texas, let me tell you. Oh my gosh, I got so tan that summer. You know, everyone has to be new at some point. So I used to wear binders that were like too small and I used to bind for too long. I used to sleep in my binders because I was like, once I got the feel for it, it's like I never want to take this off because I love the feeling of being flat and, you know, but obviously that is not safe. You shouldn't sleep in your binders. Like once you, you shouldn't, well, I mean, you can't, it depends on the binders, honestly, I feel, because those GC2B binders are extremely comfortable and honestly, they are so comfortable that I don't want to wear them out. Like, I feel like I'm not flat enough, but, like, that, that's like my home binder, honestly. But even now, like, I don't, let me tell you, I'll get to that. Anyway, so, um, yeah, I, uh, I only bind when I'm out of the house or somebody's like, I'm having company over, um, or if I'm doing this video because I, I feel like I need to, I, I shouldn't feel that way. But either way, what am I gonna do? I'm gonna be shirtless in front of you anyway. So I only bind when I'm leaving the house. I cannot leave the house without a binder. Because like, what the fuck else am I gonna, because I got, anyway. Like I've gotten so comfortable now with myself that when I come home, I immediately, whenever I'm home, I'm always shirtless. And I, shirts do not exist when I am at home unless I have company. And that's like, I've, I just, I like, obviously, who doesn't like to feel free? I love to just be free. And like, honestly, I'll be at home by myself just watching TV or something like that. And I honestly just kind of like play with my boobs now because it's like, we just, I don't know, we just have a connection now. Now we're, now we're cool. So like, you know, when we're just chilling, I'm just like, you know, fondling myself. And I'm not saying that you have to play with your chest to get a good, you know, relationship with them. But I'm just telling you, in my experience, we've gotten good. Um, you know, we've been talking, you know, I I definitely do want to get rid of them, but it's like, you know, nothing personal, obviously. It's just like, you know, it's just business. You get me? It gets hot. It gets tiring. 
can't breathe sometimes under this binder. Well, not anymore. It used to be really bad. I used to like have a hard time breathing when I first started binding. But now it's like, I don't know, maybe just because like, I don't really know. Maybe my binders fit better. Maybe like, you know, my fat, I mean, my fat did redist, redist, redistrib, redistribute, redistribute. Read, redistribute. There you go. Cause like that is a, that's not a hard word, but like, wow, why couldn't I think? Anyway, how can you help this though out when you're out in the world? Because sometimes I know that you have these days because I have these days that sometimes I'll be out and I feel like my chest is so big and I just like, I feel like it's just doing a terrible job of hiding it. And I kind of feel better um, knowing that cis men also have, some cis men also have breasts. And I guess I kind of, I kind of, it seems kind of shitty because like, oh, like he has boobs too. So it's like, you know, it's not that bad, but like kind of like that's, that's kind of, yeah. So I, I don't really feel bad about it. Not that you should feel bad. Nobody should feel bad about it, right? I guess like one thing I feel kind of helps me when I'm like face to face with another man, it's just something that I do. Um, kind of this, this like alpha thing just kind of sparks in my brain sometimes and I feel like I have to like like before because usually like at work because I just go to work and this that's the only time I'm really like worried about it but I'll go to the bathroom and I'll just like you know adjust myself a little bit come out and then I have to like walk past people and um, you know I puff out my chest uh, just so it's like because it's already big so it's like you probably think you know I probably work out but I do not I don't. I just look, I give the illusion of being kind of swole, but I am not at all. This is fat. But yeah, so that's that's kind of what I do to, to hide it. Uh, I, I guess it's not really hiding it. Like I hide it by like peacocking. Is that how you call it? I don't really know, but it's like, I don't know. I feel strong when I have my chest out. I feel like I could fight anybody. Like you come at me, bro. That ass. I'm kidding. I, I've never been in a fight in my life. Never been in a fight. That's another story. Anyway, that's my tip for y'all. Like, you know, just, you gotta, you also got to have to like uh, speak positivity into your life as well. You can give yourself like a list. Okay, so this is, I've been meaning to do this myself, honestly. I've been meaning to make myself a list of affirmations and tape it on my bathroom mirror and tape it to, cause I don't always go out the front door. Somewhere else that I, in the kitchen, I should do it there. I should put it in here. And just a list of affirmations that whenever I see the list, it reminds me that I have to say these things out loud and affirm that, I don't know, I just affirm myself. I'll figure out what the affirmations are later on, honestly. But you know, you have things that you know that you're struggling with, so you know, Come up with the positivity that you want in your life. Say those things out loud repeatedly. Another thing, I am wearing this shirt from Black Trans TV, and I just wanted to remind y'all that we do still have a brother locked up in Georgia for defending himself, and he's been in there for a couple of years now, I wanna say. His name is Kai Peterson. I don't know if you've heard the story, you should you should look it up, but I'll put a link in the description because, um, you know, we should, everybody, I feel like everybody should try to like contact him with some, you know, encouraging words, positive things, uh, just to let him know that he, isn't, he hasn't been forgotten. Let's just, you know, support our brother Kai. And uh, yeah, like I said, I'll put a link down in the description to where, I guess it's like, cause uh, there's a link to something where you have to pay for stamps for him to contact you or something like that. It's like a, it's like mail, but like digital, but it's not email. Cause that's what I thought too, but it's like, it's not. So I'll try to put the link down in the description. I'll put a story down in the description, but it's, okay. Anyway, I'll put the link down in the description for the stuff that you need to contact Kai and, you know, bring him some positivity because, you know, I, I'm sure it has to be hard for him right now. Uh, that's all I got for y'all today. So, all of this, everything that I wanted you to take from this was, you are the pilot of your own life. You seen that, that, that episode of Sweet Life of Zach Cody? I know y'all remember. Y'all have a good week and a good day, and I will see y'all next Tuesday. Um, yeah, be safe.